It's another episode of Wearable Today, episode number 99. Red balloons floating in the summer sky. Everyone's a hero. Everyone's a Captain Kirk. My name is Jeffrey Powers. We got Luke Wallace. Today we're going to talk about wearables for runners. Have we figured out the right wearable for uh, the people that do the long-term running, the hardcore running and stuff like that? Or are these wearables just, you know, kind of iffy or whatever. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Pi. We're going to talk about Tango. We're going to talk about watches and apples. And, you know, it's just going to be a fruity show. I'm just going to say that right now. So we've got it. Episode number 99, Wearable Today, and it starts now. Of course, Wearable Today is brought to you by our friends over at CashFly. Go over to C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com for more information. And we're a proud member of the Maker community over at Max dot Maker dot com dot yes dot what in what are you doing kissing, nothing yeah you, you're kissing birdie no birdie's kissing me oh i see how that's working so anyway welcome to the show while luke distracts me <laughs> my name is jeffrey powers you can find me over at geekism but you can find me at wearable today because that's where we are and that's where we're going to be for the years to come at least that, that's what I like to believe. Geekazina is the Twitter handle. And, of course, as always, the the, the lovey-doveys over there, Mr. <laughs> Luke Wallace and Miss, Miss Birdie. Hey, Luke Wallace here, hanging out. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Luke Luca or Google Plus at Plus Luke Wallace or on YouTube at Luke Wallace or Luke Luca too. Instagram at Luke Luca. Um, yeah, kind of all over the place. Yeah. And Birdie at WearableToday.com exactly. and Luke at WearableToday.com, I guess. Exactly. So, all right. Well, let's get into the news since that's what we're going to do. Let's do it by going to our thing we call Big News Little Arms. <laughs> <laughs> Righty then. First up, everyone loves having more pie, so why not have thirds? I love the pie. raspberry you see what I did there? Yeah. The Raspberry yeah. Pi 3 was announced today and has some major upgrades. It now has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in and includes a new 1.2 gigahertz quad-core processor integrated Ooh. right onto the board. So the Internet of Things groups are all abuzz with what this could mean for IoT devices. And it even makes a great first computer for developing countries or maybe just that you know computer you want to attach to your TV. What's crazy is the new device goes on sale today for the same amazing $35 price of the Pi 2. Pi 2. And I just got my Pi 2. So yep, that's not fair. That's not fair. Well, I, in, <laughs> in all reality, I got it, uh, it, it with the pro with a program installed to do t testing on it. So um, but I, I was online and I was this close to hitting that uh, purchase button, but the Pi 3 was actually sold out at that time. We're out of stock mm -hmm. at that time. And I decided not to get it right now because of the upcoming trip. I don't want it sitting on a doorstep for a week and a half uh, if it shows up the day after I leave or, or whatnot. So, but uh, yeah. yeah, pretty cool stuff. I can't, I, I'm, I'm very excited about it. And we're going to move on from there. So. Google's Project Tango is pushing the bounds of how our devices see our world. Oh, that's a ta that's a Tango, by the way. Um, so, uh, mm. Lenovo has finally announced the launch date of their first consumer version of that technology, Tango. I need a rose. Anyway. Uh, according to the interview over at Mobile World Congress, uh, the first Tango-powered Lenovo will uh, it'll be a Lenovo phone, of course, will be launching this July, and it'll have a price point of around $500. Apple has still not announced their Apple Watch sales numbers, not officially at least. But another research firm is taking a crack at their own estimate. IDC has put their estimates at 11.6 million units in 2015, which is a little under the numbers that we reported a few weeks ago by Canalys. But, you know, these are different groups. They come to their numbers a different way. Yeah. Uh, IDC still says that Fitbit leads the pack with 21 million devices sold in 2015. 
And Xiaomi, X-I-A-O-M-I, if you're looking to Google search that, comes in second with 12 million sold, just a little bit above Apple's numbers. Is that how you pronounce it, Xiaomi, or...? I believe it's Xiaomi, but Xiaomi? I'm I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. Okay. Well if if anybody knows it out there, let us know and, and we'll correct it. I, I thought it was like, like something like Zamai or something. I don't know. Anyway. Anyway. I think it's a Chinese company. Oh yeah, um, yeah, definitely. So All right, moving on. As more companies get in the IoT and wearables, there's a possibility of every manufacturer inventing their own standards. Just like with computers, or just like with Apple. And Apple and Apple and Apple and Apple and oh yeah, did you did you get an Apple Lightning cable yet or so? Um, so, but basically that could lead to incompatibility for customers, prevent the wide uh, when it's uh, trying to uh, being adopted widespread. Um, because you know it's all about licensing. You know you get the almighty dollar if 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 your thing becomes the thing. So. Some of the major sensor companies are uh, coming together, though, to agree on those standards, which is awesome. Thank you guys very much. Um, and uh, at the Embedded World Conference this week in Germany, Advantech, Arm, Bosch, Sensirion, and Texas Instruments came together to unveil the M2.com platform, which is all about those sensors. Uh, the standards for connectors and form factors should make it easier for manufacturers to integrate with other hardware but allow them the freedom to build whatever they can imagine. And we've got a link over at uh, automationworld.com. It looks kind of weird, but uh, I don't think it's uh, any type of pay site. So uh, if you see any problems, just let me know, and we'll go from there. So. Yeah, I was able to read it. PlayStation <laughs> VR hasn't gotten much attention, but apparently Sony is about to make some big announcements. Ooh. They've invited members of the press to an event right before GDC, the Game Developers Conference, uh, and that's actually where they first showed off the PlayStation VR a couple years ago. Um, since Sony has not backed down on their claim the device will launch in the first half of 2016, it's this year, we're expecting that they will have to announce both a price and a date. Um, and you can read more over it in gadget in gadget.com. Cool. Moving on. One surprise that came out of mobile world Congress was a new smartwatch from higher. Uh, first glance, it looks like another Android wear device, but actually runs a full version of Android underneath. It has completely round 400 by 400 display, 8 gigabytes of storage for lots of music, and all the requisite sensors. Wow, you put a big word in there. That's pretty good. So I knew you could handle it. Well, thank you. I, I almost didn't. That that. It was close. It was very close. Anyway, at only 200 euros, it's a very nice looking watch and can run any app on Google Play. Good job. Uh, how well does the app's work is yet to be seen, of course, but you can read the whole article uh, and see a video walkthrough on wearable.com, W-A-R-E-A-B-L-E.com. You might think that Apple Watch accessories are all about that band. About, that, about band. that band. About that about band. The band. No nope. watch face. But you would be wrong. Vigio or VGO or VGEO. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Uh, how to pronounce this. Uh, um, you're not showing the right thing on the video. Yeah, uh, apparently I must have <laughs> skipped over that, uh, over that uh, website. Okay. So. so there's this website, um, VGEO.com, and they're manufacturing custom bezels for the Apple Watch that are meant to give it a more luxury look. The bezels snap around the watch uh, face and they don't block any of the sensors or the buttons and they're offered in stainless steel, black steel, ro rose gold, and yellow gold. And then they have inset gems all around the, the watch face. Uh, I didn't see anything for pricing yet uh, listed on the site, but this could be that perfect gift for the fashionista in your life that doesn't feel like her watch matches the rest of her outfit or possibly his watch and his outfit. Um, but yeah, they've got cubic zirconia, rubies, sapphires, all this stuff around a watch face that you can add on to any Apple watch. So pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. Sorry. I'm just trying to find <laughs> it really quick. Oh. So, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, uh, this is the page. There it is. So. There it is. 
it's, yeah. it's pretty cool. Like, it, you know, sometimes you miss the, you miss the thing. So um, it actually looks pretty nice. I, oh, yeah. I was yeah. surprised. Yeah. It, and that's, that's what it is. And, um, just pops over there. And, and, uh, of course, if you don't have an Apple watch, then it doesn't really matter. So. No, not going to work with that. All right. Where are we? We're right here. Let's get back into the show. <clears throat> there we go. All right. Ready to turn your board game playing into a brand new experience? Rick Johnson and my friend Jerry Ellsworth demo Cast AR the dice at the Dice Summit in Las Vegas. It won't be ready until 2017, but imagine watching a D&D battle unfold right in front of your eyes. Uh, Cast AR is a company that raised over a million dollars on Kickstarter, but it ended up giving their money back. Uh, and, of course, they gave free headsets. I think they got some extra funding somewhere else. So they decided to uh, change things around back up and go from there. So, And I've known Jerry for a few years. Actually, I interviewed her back in 2009, 2010. Uh, very big game, big pinball machine uh, uh, person. Of course, I'm a big pinball machine fan. So, uh, so we, we talk, we geek out on, on pinball machines, except she makes them and I just play them. So, um, but yeah, if you want to check that out, it's EM, EGM now, uh, com and check out the cast AR. I'm going to try, I'm I'll see if I can get her on the show in a future episode and go from there. So, and that does it for this week's. It's not working. Why isn't it working? Let's do it again. Big news. Little <laughs> arms. <laughs> All righty then. How are you guys doing out there in the world of the world? Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's really, it's really good to hear. Yeah, you should tell us more. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Luke. How was your week? Doesn't matter. How was your week? It doesn't matter. How was your week? Oh, okay. no, no. You go first. You always ask me first. I'm gonna. I want you to know that I care. How my? You know. How did your week go? How did your weekend go? What have you been doing? I'm, I'm happy you asked. So, um, I was playing around with Facebook's new love button. The love button. Suddenly Whoa. something is on Facebook. I don't know. It's it's uh, it, of course Facebook did their their their, their uh, reactions or uh, emotions, yeah. not the dislike button. Everybody, everybody, where's the dislike button? There is no dislike button. It's that button. You're gonna like it. Hey, Mikey. So, um, no. Let's see. Uh, uh, I was playing with some wearables this week, and I actually got to uh, uh, look at and play with a Microsoft uh, the band the the second version uh, generation one. And uh, look good, and I got to play with the Garmin, uh, uh, not the Garmin, uh, it's like Gear Gear 2, Samsung Gear 2, I think it was. Is that right? That's the watch? The watch, yeah. Yeah, yeah, probably yeah. the Gear 2. Yeah, it's, it's, and it's got a remote control on it. I mean, you can actually do a TV remote for Oh, a TV remote. Like possible. a remote control for your watch, but you wear your watch. Why exactly. do you need a remote for your watch? Crazy, so. But yeah, I got to I got to see the Microsoft band. I the last time I saw it actually was this time last year at South by Southwest. It, What's the you? sensor for the watch with the remote? Are you okay? I'm trying to trying to use the remote for my watch. It, 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 uh. yeah. Oh, you, been, you mean the watch is a remote? Okay. Yeah, you've been That's drink, different. you've been drinking a little bit too much. Too much, just a little bit, so but anyway, yeah. so, <laughs> the whole point is that uh, um, I was I was playing around with some wearables and got some good ideas on how these different wearables work. Uh, and and of course, Microsoft is the more elusive of the group because you know uh, most people get an Apple Watch, and then everything else is is usually on an Android base. So you kind of get an idea. So when you get to see the uh, Windows Watch, which I don't know if they're going to continue with it, isn't the Windows Phone been discontinued or something like that? uh it's not real popular yeah um pretty pretty low market share yeah very low and they, they talked about uh something about actually discontinuing it i don't know yeah, um, maybe. i read a little bit about it but nothing nothing you know nothing to really remember too much so anyway uh so yeah just uh just did some playing around with that uh on the wearable side um 
Uh, just uh, other than that, you know, uh, Jennifer's car's on the fritz, so uh, I got to figure out how to do that. And we had a nice 50 degree day this weekend, and you're going 50 degrees. That's cold. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Yeah. Because it's what? Yeah. 75, you said there? Yeah, we've had highs in like, yeah, mid 70s these yeah. days. So pretty yeah. nice. It's, uh, this is a, this is our nice spring weather that we get um, for a couple of weeks before it gets hot. So okay. we have to take advantage of it now. Oh, yeah. No, and, and I'm going to take advantage of it in a couple of weeks when I go down to Austin for uh, South by Southwest. So I'm really excited about that. Um, but of course, uh, you've been doing some planning for mm -hmm. your trip why don't you tell people what you got so a couple of weeks ago we talked about vr and i said part of the issue is there's no vr to watch people aren't creating content for their friends to watch and so there's no reason for people to get a vr headset because they're like none of my friends like there's no vr out there for me to look at even though there's plenty out there, they just, you know, it's not anything they care about, like their kids or their friend, you know, friends, kids or their kids, friends or whatever. So I said, you know what? Um, I'm going on a trip soon and let me see how much this VR stuff is. And I was able to pull some money together and uh, cash in a bunch of Amazon gift cards. And I got myself a, uh, this is a Rika Theta S. You can kind of see the recall logo there if you're a little okay, careful. Yeah. Um, but it's a 360 degree camera. Um, that's kind of the the name for them. It actually shoots um, all the way, you know, all the way around and up and down in all directions, basically at once. Yeah. This is a real simple one to use. It's got two lenses on it, and then it can do all the stitching, basically in the. It's really done either in the the camera itself or on the app like the the pictures seem to be stitched on the camera itself the videos get stitched by the app okay. and you can upload them straight to youtube um real real simple um you know it's like a lot of the uh, action cameras kind of like a gopro um it just has a few buttons uh one to turn it on one to turn on the wi-fi and then when you turn on the wi-fi it's got a little wi-fi indicator that starts blinking here in the front uh, if you need to stitch it, why would you why would you have the Wi-Fi to it? So that's to pull the pictures off. So if you want to pull the pictures off onto your phone, oh, you okay. have to have some way to connect to it. And I guess Bluetooth is too slow. The videos are about two megabytes a second. And so if you take a 30 second video, that's 60 megabytes, which would be a lot to try to transfer via Bluetooth. Okay. That's and cool. so you've got a Wi-Fi button for that. And then it's got a button to switch between, you know, photo and video. Um, two little, uh, two little uh, lights on there, and then it's got a big shutter button, and so you basically hold it up, and it's on. Let me switch it to photo, and then you doesn't really matter which way you hold it because um, it's going to shoot every direction. And yeah. then you click the button, makes a little sound, and then there's a 360 degree photo in every direction, all taken at once. I thought that I thought that sound was birdie. <laughs> No, that birdie's, uh, that is the sound that it makes. Um, they just released an app update that lets you adjust the volume of that sound. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. And we've got, uh, we actually have a the, the video you just did. Um, yeah, the video I did. You're playing some ping pong. We've got it still right, uh, frozen right now, but uh, as you can see, we can zoom around here. And who are who are the guys in the shot? Uh, those are a couple of coworkers. Um Okay, no name coworkers. They should have red shirts on. But there's there's the top view, and uh, let's go to the bottom view. You can see the tripod, but that's pretty much it. And, and the stitching is yeah. not too bad. Um, yeah, so it's only two images that have to be stitched together, so there's only a couple of seam lines. Um, so it makes it pretty easy, I think, pretty low low effort. Um, so Pretty nice, not real high res. Uh, I would say that if you're thinking about getting one and you don't have any sort of immediate need, I would wait just a little longer because there were a bunch of 4k versions of these devices announced just a week or so ago at mobile world Congress. And so there'll be new versions coming out that'll cost either the same or just a little bit more. And that's the one bad thing I have um, about is that the resolution is not real high yeah. and it actually is high resolution, but it's getting stretched out much more than 
a normal image is. So it's like a, a 13 megapixel camera. Yeah. But that's not real high res when you think about like it has to do every direction as part of that 13 megapixels. Yeah. Um, so it's not, you know, it's not as amazing as it might sound. I'm like, wow, 13 megapixels. I, you know, it's not, you know, it's not that awesome. And the video is, yeah, 1080p, but it's wrapped all the way around in every direction. And so the part that you see when you're looking at it is, you know, more like 480 or something, you know, the kind of P looking at it, but you can look in any direction you want. So okay. uh, there's that benefit. Does it come with a bird? It does not come with a bird. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's, um, it's pretty neat. It, no, it, I, uh, no, I, I, this, I, one costs, um, this one costs 349 on Amazon. Uh, it had free one day shipping when I had it. So he basically, I ordered it one day and it came the next, cool. uh, it, um, which is actually relatively lower, you know, low cost. Uh, there are quite a few for 400, 500. Usually yeah. the more you spend, the better, you know, the better quality you get. So this was just a nice, you know, relatively cheap experiment, uh, for, for our trip coming up. You're, you're making me think on if I should get one for South by Southwest, that would be a lot of fun. Cause I'm doing a lot of video, um, of course, and I'll have all the cameras there. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, $349, that's, that's a, that's a big investment, um, for something that, you know, <laughs> cause you said it yourself, the next version's coming out, uh, very so, so. The next versions are coming out really soon. So it might be worth, um, might be worth waiting on yeah. uh, for there. But on the other hand, then I don't get uh, three three sixty 360 videos at South by Southwest. So what's mm -hmm. a person to do? So if you want to uh, get me a uh, 360 video, you know, just let me know and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll credit you on the, uh, on the video and go from there. So it'd be fun to have in my, uh, in my arsenal at South by Southwest. But, uh, um, and that does, that does bring us to this point. Uh, we are, we're on vacation <laughs> kind of. Um, uh, is Luke's going, Luke's going across the pond and, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to be going to him. And I'll be, and actually I'll be a couple hours south in, in, uh, Austin for South by Southwest as of course, as always. Um, so this, that should be a lot of fun. And uh, I'm, I'm doing some different interviews this year at South by Southwest. I've got some, um, uh, I got some, uh, bigger name celebrities that uh, I'm lining up some interviews with. So uh, Gigazine's kind of making a little transition. And I don't know if you've seen it in the last couple of weeks or not, or co last couple of months for that matter. But we're, we're going to try and... and... You okay, Bertie? Gazuntite. No, she was just fluffing. Oh, okay. Just fluffing her feathers. <laughs> I thought she sneezed. No. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, so a little bit of changes there, so you can watch that. And, uh, you know, we're going to have some fun and uh and a new video series coming up very soon um which you can be involved in and uh that's all i'm going to tell you right now and uh, not you, you well luke you no actually you couldn't be involved because you uh you're affiliated with me i'm sorry mm. but we're gonna have some fun we're gonna we're gonna we're changing things we're changing the game we're gonna change the game of podcasting with Ooh. stamp stamp Anyway, so, um, so that oh. should be a lot of fun. I'll tell you after the show what it is. So but, that's good because uh, I can't, I can't wait that I can't wait three weeks until we come back to hear what what happened. Just as long as you don't tell anybody else. Okay, okay, I will definitely stop live streaming my 360 video. Okay, um, which well, it actually can do. Uh, it actually has some capabilities of. Uh, I didn't show that on the bottom. It actually has like a little charging thing and then an HDMI out, uh, so you can do live like video uh, of it. And there's some way to do like live streaming through the USB connection you gotta, uh, as well. So. Yeah. You got to wonder if, uh, if Google has, uh, if you stream through their YouTube, if they know and they can stitch it together, if they know the camera, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, um, they I definitely would. support this camera, um, for Google street view, uh, which is, you know, those little, those cars that drive around take pictures in all directions in front of you know everybody's house and businesses and every street. So you can actually submit photos directly from this to Google street view. Okay. Um, so it pairs like the app connects to the camera and then you can basically in the app say, yes, I want to take a street view and it'll go take a picture on the camera and then transfer it back to the app and 
uh, you can then either edit it or upload it uh, for you know uh, street view. So it's pretty neat. So I'm hoping to do some street view while I'm out, get a few more pictures of of uh, Ireland and Scotland for people where maybe Google Google was too scared to go. Or you know, you know I remember, you know, and they still have them. Those websites where it's like, well, you get paid to uh, if if some news happens, uh, we're going to tell you about it. Or so you know, I think it would, they did it for. Uh, things like ways and stuff like that with the, with the traffic. So if there's a big accident on the eye or, or whatever, then uh, if you're in town, then they you go over there and you take pictures and then uh, they, they pay you for it. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody started some sort of similar street view type uh, situation. And in that uh, similar street view situation, you get paid to walk up and down your street or other streets to map it out. Yeah. So that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. It'll be, it'll be a nice experiment. I'm not sure, you know, I'll definitely have some reports uh, whenever we're, whenever we uh, come back for our next show on how well it worked and I'll have lots of pictures to share and you'll be able to kind of see my travels uh, after I took them. Cool. All right. Well, can't wait for that. And and so he's going to be gone for two weeks. I'm going to be here next week, but we're not going to do a show. Uh, here's what's going to happen. Um, so we're on episode 99, and I want I want to do something big for uh, episode 100. So I'm working on some ideas. We're going to take a few weeks off, and uh, just to kind of regroup and get things back together. So pretty much the month of March might not have an episode of Wearable today. Don't fear. We're going to come back, and then we're going to have episode 100. And then go from there. So, uh, but uh, I want to—I want kind of want to do something new, fresh, and and happy, and get some new lower thirds going, and you know, put some new lights into the studio. And oh wait, I already did that. Oh, mm. it's blue. It's nice. <laughs> it's blue. It's these. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. It's uh, I got these on Amazon. They're uh, they're what's called RGBW lights. So you can do red, blue, green. Or white, and it was very important to do the white. Uh, not as much for here, but I use these out with the band, and mm-hmm. the white light is is very important on there. And they do a good job in lighting up an area, as you can see back there. Um, but I'm also going to I'm also thinking about redesigning, uh, maybe even moving things around, and and uh, I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. But the whole point is that you know we're I'm I'm gonna t- we're gonna take a couple weeks off after our vacations and stuff like that to kind of regroup and figure out what direction is going. So if you want to be part of the direction, uh, the new direction or the Menudo or the Backstreet Boys, let us know, uh, Jeff at, uh, at wearable today, Luke at wearable today or Twitter handle geekizine or Luke Luca on the Twitters or wearable today on the Twitters. You know, there's, mm. there is the wearable today. I'd show you the socials, but we had a small little problem with the, uh, titling software and so, but basically, it's uh, wearabletoday.com or facebook.com forward slash wearable today, twitter.com forward slash wearable today, uh, youtube.com forward slash this week in glass, and plus.google.com forward slash plus this week in glass. So, because it's our old show, uh, and you know, there's not much we can do about that. So, they're not letting us change it. There it is, right there, actually. <laughs> so, anyway. That's pretty much it for that. And of course, uh, whoops, we, uh, we can go into our sponsors here. Our friends over at Cashfly, you know, you, a couple of you have wondered what this is. Basically, what this is is a CDN. Um, CDN for podcasters, a CDN for gamers, uh, uh, creating games, creating apps on your uh, uh, mobile device or, or, you know, pages on your mobile device. You want a CDN for all your photo, all your images for your website. Um, you can you can put it on here. It's a CDN content delivery network. So Cashfly and, and they've got uh, fast CDN and uh, all the video, all the audio for wearable today is over uh, technically over on Cashfly. Although you don't notice it, you get uh, you basically get it on wearabletoday.com or YouTube.com. Uh, but if you were to down, if you go to iTunes and subscribe to the uh, area which you should audio or video you'll be downloading from Cashfly. So check it out, and you can you can see the speed there. But, of course, they offer a 14-day free trial, one terabyte 
to uh, to just play with, you know. So load it up with one terabyte and, and use it for the next 14 days and see how it works. And then when you're ready to go, go over to C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com to get your, uh, your, your deal over there. So, all right, let's move on. Um, actually, before we do that, I want you to... Uh, we're we're uh, really working on getting the Reddit channel up and running. As you can see, it's reddit.com forward slash for our forward slash wearable today. I got to still figure out how the all the CSS in there, but uh, all the links to all the shows um, are from here on in are going to be in on the Reddit uh, channel. So you can uh, find out what we're going to be talking about the the night by going to that the, the day before. And then, of course, I'll, I'll post the... Uh, the show over on reddit.com forward slash r forward slash wearable today and go from there. So we got some great deals. Let's go back over here. Yes. And here, and we got some great deals over at our deals area over at uh, wearable today.com forward slash deals. Uh, if you go over there, you can, you know, like for instance, we've got the Garmin Vivo fit, Vivo fit uh, fitness band. It's a pretty decent price. Um, and of course, dubs. I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of those dubs. Those are perfect. Spring's coming. Mowing the lawn is coming, and those things are a godsend for your ears. I'm telling you that right now. So get yourself a pair. They're at a great price. Only twenty bucks. And uh, I'll I have to I have to remember to pack my dubs for South by Southwest for all the music that I'm going to be listening to. So. But anyway, other than that, they got the Samsung Gear Fit uh, smartwatch and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. You can go over to wearabletoday.com forward slash deals for that. You can leave a tip over at paypal.me forward slash Jeff Powers, and I will give Luke 10% of 50% of 30% of 20% of 50% of that tip. And then, of course, uh, everything over at wearabletoday.com. Use the hashtag weartech and, of course, the Twitter handle wearabletoday.com. And we had one more sponsorship, but uh, you're you're going on vacation, so don't get any of those shirts right now, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> had had one more bigletter.shirt.com. Think about it for your fall big letter shirt needs. How about summer? The baseball game's coming up. Uh, that's true. So, true. It's almost summertime. Got to start. Got to start hustling and. Uh, yeah. Just give it a it's couple. Me. Give it a couple Oops. weeks when he comes back. Then get your big letter shirt going. So and we'll yeah. go from there. So yeah. Anyway, that's that area. Let's uh, let's move on. Where are we? We are right here. Oh, I already skewed it up. Okay, here we go. Uh, uh, my new logo. My new my new graphics aren't working right now. Um, so just imagine Jeff's take. <laughs> Jeff's take. Now it's me. Okay, we're gonna be talking about uh. uh the wearable that runners want. Now, last night I sat down and talked with a friend who got a wearable because uh, they're getting ready to, to run a half marathon. And the next half hour, I was started to completely understand what they really wanted in a wearable. It's the same thing that we've talked about here on Wearable Today. Basically, to replace the phone. Not completely, though. Don't, don't get me totally wrong. They want this to be something that can separate uh, from the mobile and have an important function, an important use out of, uh, out of the wearable when they're out running so they don't have to have that big, bulky phone in a butt pack or anything like that. The biggest one, of course, music. Being able to uh, pull music and go into their Bluetooth earbuds. Any wearable nowadays should have base storage on it. It doesn't have to be big, 2 to 4 gigabytes. Shouldn't be a problem. We, which which one? Uh, which smart my wearable uh, had the wear storage on it that we talked about just now? Uh, that was the higher. The higher one. Okay. So you, I, mean, I think it had, it had eight gigs. Eight gigabytes. Yeah. So and, and eight gigabytes is pretty cheap nowadays. So yeah. skipping on that's kind of silly, but uh, it needs to fit music. And even the, the, the Walkman I showed a couple weeks ago, Sony Walkman, which has no Bluetooth or anything like that. It's just, it's just basically an MP3 player and it's four gigabytes and that holds 20,000 songs in higher, higher definition. So there's really nothing wrong with that. So, um, but that's what the, the runners need that and don't want to have their phones. And, uh, and in fact, 
According to CES 2016 Runner's World article, they said the Fitbit Blaze was what they thought the runners want, which is, you figure, okay, these guys are experts on runners. They have an idea of that. Only problem is it isn't. The biggest issue with that device is size, and uh, it's way too big and too lopsided for a runner because you, you put a watch on there, you're trying to pare down as much as possible, and then you put a big bulky thing on your wrist, in that you, and you're running and you're trying to get that. It's, it's like having a, uh, a one-pound weight in one hand and nothing in the other hand. It doesn't make any sense. Trying to even it out as much as possible is important too. So the best watch would be one that's lightweight, that stores music, that allows for note-taking via voice, possibly something that can send quick texts at when you're at a coffee shop using the Wi-Fi. It doesn't have to contain LTE, um, but it wouldn't be a bad idea if it did. It would have to be pairable with Bluetooth. It would have GPS tracking because GPS tracking is, is open last time I checked. So, you know, it's not like you have to uh, pay for a service for GPS. Um, so, and, and of course, most important, the size of the wristband that can fit snug against the skin so it's not flopping around. And don't forget about those sensors being able to read your heart rate and all your other vitals so they know what's going on with their body um, So when, they, uh, when they're running six or seven miles. So question is, can that be com uh, co accomplished in a 2016 wearable? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe we need to wait a couple of years. But then again, if it was incorporated in more than one, just one wrist without adding major weight, maybe runners would consider it. So instead of having one wearable on one wrist, you have two equally weighted wearables on two wrists, or maybe even something more. Uh, like for instance, uh, water bottles are a big issue for runners, and a lot of them don't like the fact that they hold on to a water bottle. They created what's called the Camelback, which is a little thing that, that puts in between your shoulder blades, and you can fill your favorite liquid in there. It could be water, it could be vodka, it could be something else. I don't know. So, um, And then, of course, a little straw comes up so you can drink it. So when you're at that seven-mile mark and you need to rehydrate, you can do that just by just really quick and uh, and go from there. So... Bottom line is if the electronics can be distributed in a shirt, shorts, maybe give the runners uh, what they need, it would help immensely. And keep that 5.7-inch smartphone at home when they're out uh, going for a run so they can find out where the bear claws are so they can stop for breakfast. And that's my take on it. That's a good take. Thank you. What's Birdie's take on it? Uh, Birdie's not really a runner, so does, does Birdie, Birdie, fly? Birdie, Birdie can't wear a watch, so yeah. she has a little band, but it's not a fitness band. It's just a little is it a track identification band? Oh, it's it, it's an old fashioned identification band. Yeah, it's got a little number stamped on it, but that's about it. Okay, but it could be it could have a GPS tracker in there. It's pretty small, so I don't think it could have one these days. But and maybe someday. Maybe someday. Now Birdie doesn't like that band. Yeah, yeah. She's like, "What about my band? What's wrong with my, my band?" Band alone. So, anyway, I, I threw you off track there. So let's uh, let's let's hear your take on this whole thing. Luke's take. It's the no, that, no, that's not that's that's not it. Straighten out um, your hair, by the way. Hmm. Do this with your hair. Oh, is it? Is it all coming up? Yeah, there you go. I've I've been adjusting my headphones, trying to get them a little more comfortable, but they kind of puff my hair out. You should cut your hair, you hippie. Yeah, I know. Um, I don't think it's gonna happen. All right, anytime go ahead. soon. So anyway, I am not a runner. What? So uh, just keep that in mind. Okay. I have run a few five Ks, and I've ridden my bike to work a couple of times. So I understand some of the concerns around a fitness wearable. But there is this one guy at our office. He rides his bike to work almost every day. And for him, that's 35 miles or more. Every day he does it. So he had an iPhone. So he got an Apple Watch. He carries his phone in a pocket in the back of his riding jersey. And he wears his Apple Watch. So that way he can easily call home without getting his phone out. Uh, and he has some other fitness apps, uh, but they don't 
work off of just the phone or just the watch. I mean, they had, they actually use the phone. So he has to pull his phone out and do whatever, and then put it back. So the watch doesn't help with everything he does. Uh, but he also carries a laptop and some extra clothes, uh, and, you know, snacks and other stuff that he has with him on his bike. So saving the weight of the phone for him is not really that big of a deal. Um, what I do think, though, is really important from all these, uh, maybe more important to me than even the weight, because uh, like I said, I'm not a runner where the weight of the phone is really going to make much difference in my performance. But I think what would improve it a lot uh, is having a great offline experience. Android Wear, I think, is moving a lot faster in this direction than the Apple Watch. Of course, that's not real well publicized by Google or the media at this point. So here's an example. Android Wear introduced offline music over a year ago, and apps have had the full ability to run offline for just about as long. Uh, and now even devices have 4G built in. But there is one problem, app developers. And I say that as someone who works in app development. So I'm not really like pointing fingers at anybody uh, but myself here. So until developers start to use the offline features and start building apps that take advantage of them, it's not really going to take off. Sure, Google can build a few apps and they'll and Apple will build a few apps for their devices, uh, but the third parties are what really drive the market. Uh, so I think what we need is an offline run tracking with GPS. Like you said, you don't really need, um, you don't need a connection to use GPS. We're just so used to it that we think it's required, but it's not. Um, maybe a news reader so that you could listen to the top stories of the day or the top world news when you're out for that morning run. And of course, some hybrid fitness app like Zombie Run or something else where it, it's not just fitness tracking, it's also you know a form of entertainment and motivation. I think all, if you had all of those, you would really have a great offline experience. Then if you add in a mapping solution so that you could see you know, your favorite eatery nearby and then throw in a form of payment, like a Starbucks barcode that, so you could scan it and pay for a drink while you're out. All of a sudden now you have the entire offline experience and then all you need to wear is that little watch. And so your friend uh, who, you know, is trying to get rid of as much weight as possible that he's carrying with him uh, would be much happier uh, with the entire uh, wearable and fitness uh, wearable uh, experience that we're trying to make. Agreed. Totally agreed. So, yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, I think, so oh, yeah, I, I don't know. So, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. So I was going to say, so your take is you got to make it where you can, like you got to get rid of the weight. That's yeah. the reason that you got to have offline. And mine is, you know, that, that makes it more convenient and it makes it where, you, you know, you got to have something to do offline though. Uh, so I think that um, we're kind of in agreement here. Uh, maybe we're in a little disagreement of how important the weight issue is, but um, yeah, I think, well, I think. It's, it's, oh. it's important for everybody to know that neither of us are runners. So we don't, we, you know, it's, it's these little nuances that we don't know but I have an idea, um, and, mm -hmm. and uh, it, I suppose if you're a biker or something like that, it, it could that, the same stuff could go there. But when you're running, you try to have as little as possible. I, I watched. I remember uh, well, a year and a half ago, I went out to New York and watched a friend run at the at the, in the New York City Marathon, and she, you know, she was telling me, you know, what they have to do the shoes, are, you know, they're not standard tennis shoes or anything like that. They're they've got as little sole as possible they got as little as material as possible they're wearing they're wearing skin tight uh, uh shirts and skin tight pants and and stuff like that so there's no anything that goes uh, that goes on that you know can distract or or cause wind resistance or cause anything so i i think of it as like a finely uh, runner as as somebody that's trying to fine tune a, an actual scale and mm -hmm. if you put one gram on one side, the scales are going to tip, and you've got to figure out how to evenly distribute that uh, that 
that scale so they can be in fine tune so they can run so uh, yes uh, uh, the weight is the thing the other thing was because uh, your your moto 360 won't work because it's this also about the size of the wearable <clears throat> and i always thought you know, and when when i was talking to this person about it the one thing i thought about was what if they made a wearable that was like a band wearable but then you took your bigger uh, watch face and you just snapped it right on. So when you go out for a run, you take off the big watch face, and you got you still have the electronics in there doing something. And then when you're out, you know, want to show off your bling, you pop it on just kind of like that uh, that thing we talked about with the uh, what was that called? Um, da -da 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 the one I missed, uh, the v uh, VGO. V oh yeah, -E yeah, the little so, uh, watch face plate exactly. thing. Exactly. So you make it a clip-on, and that way you can uh, use it as a regular watch or a band and go from there. So um, that's that's where that's where we were going with that. It's 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 a really interesting world when you talk about runners, Ironmen, uh, triathlon, uh, or marathon runners. All three of them pretty much say the same thing. We want they would probably run naked if they had the opportunity. And uh, it, it sounds like a joke, but the reality is they probably would run naked yeah. just to, you know, maybe maybe tape down certain parts of their body so they don't flap around in the wind. But <laughs> that's what they would do. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Like when you're on, when you're getting to that level, uh, it's very different than the casual fitness enthusiast that. Yeah, they go to the gym, you know, once or twice a week, yeah. and then they go out for runs in the morning. Uh, you know, they go run five miles in the morning or something like that. Those people, I would say, like your more casual people, are probably not as concerned about that. Now, they would like a nice offline mode, I think, um, and the weight. You know, they would they like to get it low, but they're not going to necessarily give up some functionality because like, well, that's nice, but I'd like to be able to listen to my music while I run. And yeah. Uh, whereas I'm guessing the marathon people, they don't, they don't have headphones. They don't have a, a Walkman on their arm or anything because it's just extra weight that you got to carry the entire marathon distance. Yeah. Some of them do some of them, you know, they, they can't run without, without their music. So yeah. they, they have the armbands with their phone on and, and stuff like that. Uh, the person I was talking to, they actually use their old, uh, their old HTC, and because uh, it, it's a smaller phone, um, mm -hmm. it doesn't have any uh, SIM access, but it has GPS. Because once again, GPS, you know, it's not like you have to pay for GPS. Um, so cameras, uh, these cameras that I get have GPS in them. So uh, they, they can tell me where, where they are, what they've been doing. So it's a, it, it, if, as long as you have the basics and, and the basic needs, yeah, you don't get the LTE just yet. That's okay. Um, but if it does have something that can connect the Wi-Fi to a coffee shop or something like that, um, and then yeah. some of these marathons, you know, then they'd start investing in an infrastructure that along the route, they'd put repeaters along the route, and then they'd give each person a Wi-Fi username and password, which they could put into the wearable and then be able to run throughout the race without their phone and still be able to get the messages they need. Yeah, yeah. And I think it'd be neat to have... Uh, tracking. Um, I know a couple of the 5Ks I've run have had these little loops you wear, yeah. uh, little ID loops right on your uh, shoes. And then when you pass over to the different tracking stations, they can actually tell you, you know, how long your time is. And that all can, can be tracked. It'd be cool to actually have that tied in to some sort of system so that as you're running along, you could be you know, getting like, what's the, you know, what's your official time from the, uh, you know, from the race organizer or whatever. Uh, like they, they say, boop, boop, you know, Oh, Hey, remember that mile marker from about a mile back? Like you've now, you know, gone far enough and we've calculated your time and Hey, you're at, you know, this pace, this, uh, here's your time. Here's your pace. Yeah. Um, it'd be really interesting information for them to have in real time. And you kind of wonder, would that be, um, would that be something that they'd be interested in? Because yeah. it seems like it would be. Oh, yeah. Seems like if they could, they could probably be showing that now. There may even be races that do that where they could have like a little display that you know says, "Okay, we'll show," you know, like we we get your time and then we show it on a board, uh, you know, a, a little ways ahead of that, so that when you get up there, you can say like, "Oh, okay, there was my there's my time for uh, the first 
yeah. quarter of the the marathon or actually uh, new york city marathon does do that um oh, okay and, uh, not only that but it also you know you can go up on a web page and track where your uh where your where your person is and, and so see some oh, statistics see. so no, it's not 100 percent accurate but it's close enough and you get mm-hmm. a good idea so you can find the right spot to meet up with your friend and take pictures or whatever so yeah. Um, but, yeah. uh, yeah, it, it, it definitely would, uh, improve any marathon if they had some sort of info, uh, infrastructure with that. And then you can, you can be like, uh, if you like HTC or, or, uh, or Samsung or anything like that, you can make a specific wearable, which only will work on the New York city marathon. Imagine that if you had one wearable and then, you know, you bought this wearable a couple hundred dollars and then you used it uh, f- for one reason. It was a New York City Marathon, uh, but it gave you everything you needed to know um, about it. Uh, uh, that would be that would be some that'd be a, that'd open up a brand new uh, brand new category in wearable. Yeah, and I mean, if you told people that we're going to use this wearable for at least the next five years, we'll support it. So you could, you know, you could see it as an investment if you're planning on running in it every year, Yeah, like you'd probably get quite a few people buying it. And especially after the first year, if you did a good job, you'd get, you know, like a whole lot of people would buy it the second year uh, because they'd be, um, they'd hear about, you know, how awesome it was and how, you know, you could get messages from maybe your friends online and, you know, like you pass by an access point and it's like, you know, John says, you're doing great. John says, good job. You know, I saw you or whatever. It's like the zombie me. run. Uh, that's, that's a perfect ex- example. You know, you could put up together an app that basically you could choose whether to be a human or a zombie. And while you're running the, the race, you could see how many zombies are. Or if you have a buddy that's running the race, you can find out where they are and then get like uh, sound alerts. It's like if, if they hit the 10 mile mark, you know, you get a little bing on your, uh, on your wearable or, or in your uh, earphones or something like that. Yeah. That'd be interesting to make it a little more competitive during the race. Exactly. Uh, Cause yeah, I know like it's probably really hard to race alongside people, but you could be tracking and maybe getting alerts of like the top person or, you know, somebody that you follow that runs in it just, you can be like, wow, I can't believe how fast they're going. You know, you're getting those alerts and maybe it motivates you to go a little bit exactly. faster or whatever. Exactly. So lots of different things. And, and it, it, it just made me think when I was talking to this person and they were just kind of, they were really going off and this needs to be this way. And this, and they've already co- taken back uh, a couple different wearables uh, because mm. they thought it would do something and it wasn't it wasn't to their need so they're very very stingy and mm-hmm. when it comes to that but they also need that uh that one to two week window to try and figure out if that wearable works for them and uh and so if that if that person is and that you know it's not like they're not like a uh a season not a, not a season but uh you know like a, a full-time runner uh, they're just doing these half marathons, but you know there are people out there that buy that stuff, and they would definitely get a wearable for that. So, yeah, all right, yeah, cool, cool stuff. Oh yeah, definitely. And if you're out there, if you're a runner and you and you are confused on the wearables, you want to know more about it, and you got some ideas that we should be cons- uh, 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 thinking about, so we can talk to these wearable companies and let them know. Uh, let us know, Jeff at Wearable Today, Luke at Wearable Today, Birdie at Wearable Today, dot com, and uh, uh, we'll go from there. So, but in the meantime, Luke, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you and Birdie after two weeks from today? So you can find me on Twitter, Luke Luca. You can find me on Google Plus at Plus Luke Wallace. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram at Luke Luca. Um, or yeah, look at wearabletoday.com. I'll be posting public pictures on probably Google Plus somewhat because it's got uh, it's got those nice 360, like it supports the photospheres yeah. natively. I haven't figured out how to do that on Facebook yet. I, they're supposed to support 360 video. Haven't been able to get any of that to work, but it works on YouTube and the 360 pictures work on Google Plus. So if you're interested in that, uh, make sure you're following me there. Okay. I think I think it works on Facebook by simply uh, it's simple the same as uh, idea as an animated GIF. Uh, you can't upload the GIF onto Facebook, but you can link to the GIF, and then, mm. and then the GIF becomes uh, becomes animated there. 
So I'm not 100 percent sure because, of course, I don't have a 360 camera. But yeah, I'm going to have to do some more experimenting before I go on this trip just to see. And you're making me think about actually buying a 300 uh, 360 camera. Wasn't planning to doing it now, but I'm sorry. (laughs) Hey, you know, if it gets me more views, then uh, don't be sorry. Because I yeah. think that I th- that 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 will make it worth it, and then afterwards I can sign it and sell it, you know, because it'll be worth more after I si- sign it, right? Uh, sure. Okay. So, all right. Well, if you want to find me, uh, I'm over at Geekazine Think Magazine, putting the geek. That's me, and of course Jeff at wearabletoday.com. Luke, it's been a great ride. We are not only is this the 99th episode, this is also the end of season three of wearable mm-hmm. today. We've been doing this for three years and we're getting into season four, the fourth year. So think about that. It's, um, a long time. it's been a long time. 2012. We started this whole ride. So, yep. uh, and I, you know, I, I put out the call and say, I'm doing the show at the time this week in Google glass. Luke, uh, about a month later, you said, Hey, I want to be part of this show. And uh, boom, bada boom, bada bing, bada bang, bang, bang. We got a wearable show. So uh, thank you very much for uh, being here for season three. Uh, hope to see you uh, on season four. Yeah, we'll have to work out uh, getting together. We, I know we, we keep saying we're going to get together. And then this year I actually have had two things come up in the past week that they're like, hey, can you get to South by Southwest? Because we have something there that we want to do. And I said... I can't. I'm actually on. I'm going to be out of the country, uh, so I I can't go this year. And like the past three years, like nothing, no no reason to go at all. And this year, I've got a couple of things already lined up, and so it would have been would have been great. So next year, I'm gonna I'm not gonna plan around it. Uh, or I mean, I will plan around it so that I can go. And, uh, we'll have to meet up then. Oh yeah, definitely. And then of course, if not be, before, yeah, I, 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 let's try before. So. All right. Well, that does it for this show. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for listening. And if you haven't checked out the other 98 episodes, go back and check them out because, you know, we've we've done 99 episodes. Crazy. So anyway, uh, uh, the date coming back, we don't have definite. So just watch wearabletoday.com. I'll post a link when we're uh, when we're going to be back. And, of course, uh, subscribe over on iTunes. Subscribe over on Stitcher. Subscribe over on YouTube. Uh, subscribe over on Wearable Today. And you won't miss another episode. I guarantee that. So thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for listening. We'll see you next time. You guys geek out. And uh, we'll see you soon on Season 4, Episode 100 for Wearable Today. Take care. <laughs>